ever since I got a hold of AGX, I've been pretty much obsessed with the results it produces. It was meant to be an upgrade to Filmic in Blender, but it turned out to be much, much more than that. I've noticed that AGX is not only excellent for 3D rendering, but it's also an incredibly robust picture formation mechanic. It all started with me messing around in Blend's compositor to develop my own photos. It wasn't the most efficient way of doing things, which means it was absolutely awful. <laughs> I used to take a picture on my phone, move it to my laptop, open it in Darktable, export it to EXR, load that into Blender, do the grading, export it, put it back on my phone. The point is, things look the way I want it to look, and that's the most important part. So after posting one of my photos on Mastodon, someone asked me whether it was possible to get AGX to run on a smartphone, to develop the DNG RAW files captured using the phone's camera. Of course, the only logical way to do that was to install Linux on Android, together with Blender, and use a remote viewer to get that DNG into a JPEG. It worked. As a joke. But that joke was something that led me to think really hard about whether it was possible to get AGX running on a smartphone. Fast forward to today, and I can gladly tell you that yes, it is. I've spent a ridiculous amount of time this year developing Solala, an AGX-based raw file developer. Solala is a free, donation-supported app that's currently officially out on Android, with plans to release it for Windows and macOS as well. Let me introduce you to it. If you're subscribed to my channel, you've probably heard me go on and on about Filmic, AGX, so I'll try to spare you the details and condense this information as much as possible. So why AGX over the JPEGs that come out straight of your phone's camera app? Even though modern camera apps have all these incredible exposure stacking, denoising, edge enhancing algorithms, when it comes to color processing, it seems that they're still stuck in the year 2000. If you've ever taken a photo of a clear blue sky, you've probably already encountered something that's called a hue shift. Here, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. If we were to take a completely dark blue and start making it lighter, we should end up with a nice smooth gradient. But that is often not the case when it comes to phone photos. Instead, what we get is a gradient that changes color completely and has a varying rate of change. I've made this little test scene so the brokenness is a bit more pronounced. You can see it here that we have blue that shifts towards cyan that very quickly ends up white. Now for comparison, let's switch to AGX. Notice how smoothly the blue transitions to white without ever becoming cyan. If sure, we've lost some colorfulness, but we can always increase that later. The most important part is to get a good starting point on which we can build our picture. Here's another example. A slightly brownish color. This could either be a, a sunset or just skin in, in harsh lighting. Same problem, different outcome. The brown color shifts towards pure yellow, then quickly turns white. If we switch to AGX, you will notice that the gradient is completely smooth. It does not form an ugly disk in the center, nor does it shift towards yellow. Luckily, the same color preserving process can be applied to your phone photos. We can ask the camera app to give us a raw DNG file instead of letting it automatically process it into a JPEG. We can take that DNG and do the processing ourselves using Solala and AGX. In short, what AGX does is it makes sure that the color stays on course to white providing smooth, lovely gradients for that cinematic, filmic, or renaissance-like look. Or, in other words, a pretty picture. A great example of a great color process was the latest avatar, The Way of Water. 
Notice how the blue skin smoothly fades into white, without veering either towards cyan or violet. The non-blue skin tones attenuate to almost pure white without ever breaking into bright yellow. And that's exactly what we want from our phone photos, right? Okay, now that you're up to speed with the why, let's move towards the how. Let's launch the app and develop a photo. Sorry about the format, this is a direct phone screen capture, so it's quite awkward to fit it on a landscape video. Let's click on the big import file button and let's select the DNG we want to develop. It takes a bit of time to load, but we'll get there eventually. Straight out of the box, we get quite a dark, bland picture, but that's mostly intended. I wanted the photo to have as little processing as I could possibly give you. The picture you make is yours. So this is the main develop screen where most of the magic happens, as it holds all of the development sliders. If some of these are unclear, there's a handy info button on the right side that opens a pop-up with a bit of information. Now the picture is a bit dark, so let's start by increasing exposure. It's also a bit flat, but we can use the power slider to increase the contrast. After that, purity. This is what makes your picture come alive. However, try to use the slider with caution as pushing it too much might lead to the very same problems we're trying to avoid. Hue shifts and clipping. If we want to tweak the picture further, we can always go back and forth between the sliders. If you find areas that are misbehaving and look way more colorful than the rest of the picture, you can use the saturation versus saturation slider. That often gives you some headroom for other adjustments. Target black will fade the dark parts of the picture, sort of imitating a print look. Same with the target luminance. This will gently lower the ceiling of the picture, darkening the lightest areas. Lastly, grain, which pretty much does what it says on the packaging. There are also handy tools in the top bar. We can rotate the picture first, and then crop off the black areas left over from rotating. There's a few common aspect ratios to choose from as well. There's some neat stuff in the settings window that you can set according to your preferences. Also, there's the sources selection. It gives you a few different processing flavors to choose from that will affect your whole picture. It's sort of like different film stocks, but not really. It was a bit difficult to find a name for it, so I went with sources. Oh, and one more thing, there's a clipping indicator that will inform you whenever there's values that will be clipped. So if you get too carried away having fun with the sliders, the Sun logo will turn red. However, I still recommend you use your own judgement and make the picture the way you want it to be. That's it, you're ready to export. There's an add frame toggle box that will add a frame on top of your final picture. You can find all the frame settings in the settings menu. And there's a few export sizes to choose from, full and common. After you hit export, it will take a second or two, and your photo should be in pictures, so Lala folder. That's it. If you like what I'm cooking, subscribe to this channel, as I'm planning to post development updates, um, discuss decisions, and do some more color talk. Also, support Solala, if you can, of course. Every single coin matters as I'm planning to keep this app free and keep maintaining it for as long as possible. I have a quite a few things planned and I'd like to implement them all at some point. I have set up a Patreon as well as a Ko-Fi and there's a changelog and bug tracker on GitHub. And you will always find the app on www.solala.com. Hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed making it and using it in my day-to-day -day life. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.